Hi everyone, this is Xuan Wang from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Today I'm going to introduce our work called Comprehensive Named Entity Recognition on Court 19 with Distant or Weak Supervision. This is the outline of my presentation today. I will first introduce an overview of this COVID-19 Open Research Dataset Challenge called Court 19 Dataset. Then I will go into the details of our method, Comprehensive Named Entity Recognition on Core 19 with Distant or Weak Supervision. When introducing our method, I will first introduce this Named Entity Recognition task, or this NER task. Then I will introduce the Core NER fine-grained entity types that can be recognized by our NER method. Then I will introduce the details of our NER method that does not take any human annotation for training. And last, we will do some comparison with other baseline methods and show some results. And uh, at last, we will show the links to our datasets and the systems from our group at UIUC. Now we first introduce this Court 19 dataset, which is called COVID-19 Open Research Dataset Challenge. At the beginning of March, White House released this call to action to the tech community on new machine-readable COVID-19 datasets. So researchers from Allen Institute and many others released this dataset called Court 19, which includes many literature about this COVID-19 and other coronavirus families of the virus. This corpus is under active updates and it is updated week weekly as new research is published. Here we show the download links of this dataset either from Semantic Scholar and Kaggle. So basically, we take this Core 19 literature dataset as our input corpus, and we want to automatically recognize many different biomedical entities that are most related to the COVID-19 studies. Now we introduce this named entity recognition task. It is a subtask of information extraction that seeks to locate and classify the named entities in text into some predefined categories. So here is an example. Nicotine inhibits apoptosis by chemotherapeutic drugs by upregulating XIAP and Cervivian. So here in this sentence, you can see nicotine should be a chemical entity, and this XIAP and Cervivian should be gene entities. So the task of NER is to let the algorithm read the raw sentence and then automatically decide which token should be some entities and also what type those tokens should belong to of the entity types. There are some cri uh, critical challenges on recognizing new entity types without human supervision. So previously, some traditional methods always involve human to annotate a lot of sentences with examples of say chemicals and the genes, and then the machine can learn from the annotation and then recognize those predefined types on new sentences. However, there could be many new emerging concepts such as those COVID-19 entities that has never been annotated by any human effort before. Plus, there are some more domain-specific entity types such as those biological process and animal models and many others in the biomedical domain that also do not have any human annotation. So the question we're trying to address is that can we automatically annotate those new concepts or very fine-grained types without always requiring human to annotate a lot of training data? So here we can take a look at the fine-grained entity types we annotated with our method. We propose this comprehensive NER annotation on the Core 19 dataset, which is a combination of four sources. First are 
18 general types from some pre-trained supervised NER models such as SPACI. It can include some important types such as those time, location, also organization, numbers. Those are, although not biomedical types, those can be equally important for COVID-19 studies. Second are some pre-trained biomedical types such as some pre-trained NER models from science basic. It includes some very general types such as genes, chemicals, and diseases. Third, there could be a lot of more fine-grained and domain-specific entity types in existing knowledge bases. For example, we take UMLS as our input knowledge base, and we try to only rely on these examples in knowledge base for high-quality named entity recognition without requiring any human effort to annotate all the more than 100 entity types in UMLS. And last, there could be some new entity types that are specifically related to the COVID studies that are even not that specifically included in UMLS knowledge base. Here, we include nine new types such as coronavirus and viral proteins. Those are very COVID-19 specific types. And for those new types, we only require human to input 10 to 20 seeds for each new types, and we will be able to recognize them in large raw text. Finally, we reorganize all the entity types from the above four sources and merge them into one entity type hierarchy that includes 75 fine entity types for our core 19 NER annotation. Here we just quickly show some examples of the types. For example, in science basic, it will have some types like organism, also chemicals, genes, and diseases. And in SPACI, the general entity types, it will have person, location, organization, and also time and the cardinal or numbers. Then in the UMLS tab, in addition to the common biomedical entities such as genes and chemicals, it also includes other fungal entity types that can be equally interesting to COVID-19 studies. For example, it includes many behavior entities such as social behavior or individual behavior. It also includes some like activities such as those laboratory procedure, diagnostic procedure, or therapeutic or preventative procedure. It also includes some process of physiological or pathological functions. Those are all very important biomedical entities. And uh, there, uh, there exists no human annotated training data, so no existing fully supervised bio-NER models can detect those fine new entities. And here we show some examples of the nine new entity types defined by human input seeds, such as the coronavirus, viral proteins, livestock, wildlife, evolution, physical science, substrate, material, and immune response. Those are also very important, such as those materials can be used to study like the viability or how long the virus can stay on different material surfaces in the environment. Then we can take a look at our method. For our method, named entity recognition without human annotation, we have, we have two steps in our algorithm. The first is a dictionary-guided representation learning, and the second is a distantly supervised NER model. For the dictionary-guided representation learning, we want to learn a better representation of both the, all the new entity types and all the candidate entities in the text so that it can uh, satisfy two criteria. First is coherence, which means entities should have embeddings that are close to their corresponding types embedding. For example, in the embedding space, SARS should be close to coronavirus. Second is called the discriminativeness, which means that different entity types should have embeddings far apart from each other. For example, 
in the embedding space, coronavirus type should be far apart from viral protein type. To ensure coherence, we introduce this conditional probability, such as such that the entity and type, if they have a similar embedding, they will have a higher probability of observing the type given the entity. And for discriminativeness, we try to enforce this similarity of the type embedding, the probability of each type embedding with the probability of a one hop vector encoding for each type. And by incorporating these two kinds of criteria, we'll be able to learn a much better embedding of all the entities, candidate entities in the corpus. There are two advantages of learning this embedding. First, we can incorporate this embedding into the second step as an initial input of the NER neural model so that it can further boost the NER performance. And second, this embedding can also help us expand some small dictionaries a little bit to include more entities, more high quality entities, so that with a richer dictionary we'll be able to also boost the NER performance. Then we go to the second type of this distantly supervised NER model. Basically, take the expanded dictionaries, we will label the corpus as some distant labels. Then we will train this distant NER model. It has two steps. The first is entity span detection. The second is entity type detection. Basically, in entity span detection, we want to know sleep disturbance should be one span, which means one candidate phrase or entity, and also drug action will be one entity. And in entity type classification, we want to know that sleep disturbance <coughs> is more likely to be a disease rather than a chemical. By splitting this, this, this detection into two steps, the major advantage is that when we are doing this labeling process or this typing process, we can type some confident entities such as sleep disturbance with its known type, but some not sure entities such as drug action with some unknown type. And during this entity type classification training, we can skip those unknown types during training so that we can reduce the false negative labeling problem for distant supervision. In this way, will be able to achieve a better performance for entity named entity recognition under this noisy distant label setting. So now we can take a look at some results. We first do some quantitative comparisons, comparing with some baseline methods. First, we can look at our method compared with science basic on three major biomedical entity types, including gene chemical and disease. This total means the micro average of the performance of all the three types. And here we can see that our, our method always achieve a better performance. And especially when we calculate the total score, it achieves more than 10% of improved performance compared, compared with science basic. We also compare our method with Sunbird and Science Basic on some existing standard bio-NER datasets, including BC5 CDR and NCBI DDs, and we can see that our algorithm also achieves a higher performance. Moreover, for those Sunbird and Science Basic, they can only be trained on some human annotated training corpus. So they can only recognize a limited number of entity types, such as 5 or 18 types. However, for ours, currently we can automatically annotate the 75 entity types defined by knowledge base and human input seeds, and we have the potential to automatically include more entity types when needed by only adding dozens of seeds as input examples. Moreover, we show some qualitative results of the annotation results. Our method is quite general, so it can work on either news corpus or biomedical literature. 
This is one example in the news corpus in the New York Times. We can see that our method not only recognizes some common types, such as U.S. as a geographic location or Trump as a person, but we can also recognize new types, such as coronavirus as a virus type and also masks as a manufactured object and doctors and nurses as a group of people. This much richer annotation can help improve the analysis of text information for COVID-19. This is another example in the biomedical literature. Similarly, we can see that our method not only recognizes those common types such as genes or chemicals, but we can recognize such as SARS-CoV-2 as a coronavirus, phylogenetic as an evolution concept, and also bat and pangolins as wildlife. Furthermore, we show some top entities recognized by our distant NYA methods in this COVID-19 corpus. We can see those results are quite reasonable. For example, for the sign of symptoms, the top results include such as cough, respiratory symptoms, and also vomiting. And uh, many others, like for social behavior, it includes collaboration and sharing. And for individual behavior, it includes compliance and hand hygiene. Um, and also, in, interestingly, for computer science people, we see the machine activities include some top results like machine learning, data processing, and also deconvolution, telecommunication, which means that people are indeed looking into some data-driven or machine learning-based methods to handle those large-scale biomedical data sets for COVID-19 studies. And here are more results for those seed-guided NER ones. For example, for coronavirus, we can find many top ones like SARS, COV, or MERS. And also for wildlife, we find those such as bat and different types of bat. And for materials, they are like air, plastic, or fluid. Then we can uh, go to a summary. And here are all the data sets and the systems from our data mining group at UIUC developed for this COVID-19 literature study. This is the core NER data set we have introduced, and this is the link of our corpus website and website download. Moreover, based on this core NER data set, we build an evidence miner system, which can automatically retrieve textual evidence given a human input query in natural language. And here is the paper and the online demo for evidence miner. And also, there is one called the set search, which is a literature search engine for COVID-19. Our research is supported by those funding agencies, including DARPA, NSF, and also DITRA. And here is the reference of our related work. Thank you very much for your attention.